Okay, so we talked about measurements, and we've done some things with measurement, and you've really already been working with this, but I want to make sure that everybody is familiar with the metric system, how we're going to use the metric system, and you need to be able to convert within the metric system. So, metric system is great because it is based on tens. Tens are really easy. If you divide by ten, you move the decimal over one. Okay, so like, you know, one divided by ten, you move the decimal this way. If you multiply by ten, one times ten, you move the decimal that way. Really easy. Okay? So, just keep that in mind. It's so much simpler. If you think about the English system, like a cup is 8 ounces, a pint is 16, a gallon is 128. All right, these are not easy numbers to go through. You know, in length, we have 12 inches to a foot, and then inches are in sixteenths, and there's 5,821 5, feet in a mile. It's just, I mean, they're ridiculous numbers to work with. Metric is so much more easy. Okay. I highly suggest printing off this file. It is on the website. Um, you can bring it in tomorrow. The, even having this and a few notes written on it would suffice for your notes for this video. All right, but there's just some big things that I want to point out that this sheet will help you with. First thing is our staircase base unit group right here. Okay, these are in the metric system, the base units. All right, metric system, you know, then this is kind of where all the names come from. So the metric system base units are the meter, gram, liter, and second. So M, G, L, and S. Now, another thing I want to note, and I put this on the chart as well for you guys, is that down here, SI, or the international system of measurement, and you know what you actually plug into an equation, because equations are based on SI, they're slightly different than um, your metric base units. Okay, so in an equation, if you have to put in a length, you do it as a meter, that matches. But if you have to do a mass, and this is the big huge one that we're going to use a lot, you need to put in kilograms. Alright, um, we may run into an equation once or twice that shows a volume. And volume in SI, whenever you see it in an equation, is actually going to be in moles. Alright, and then in time... This one's easy, this one matches the seconds. Okay, so the big differences are mass, and we are going to be using that one all the time in equations. So instead of plugging in grams, you have to plug in kilograms. All right, and then if we end up using any equations with volume, you'll have to plug in moles instead of um, liters. But I don't think in regular we'll really hit that any. But back to our chart here. Okay, these things down here are just relate to when you're using equations. And if you notice, kilograms, it just means that you're in an equation, you're plugging in a value at this point. Okay, so it's still something that falls in the metric system, it's just not the base unit. Now, there's two, there's a few different ways to think about converting. There are these handy little things drawn on the chart with you. And for a while, I'm going to give you, allow you to use this chart on quizzes. Like this whole week, you'll be able to use it on quizzes. Um, you'll always be able to use it on labs, things like that. So keep it with you, okay? But eventually, you kind of need to get down, especially from kilograms to millimeters. You should have, honestly, you've, if you had me for biology, you were already taught this, and odds are all the other biology teachers already taught you this, and if you've already had chemistry, I'm sure you've gone even further than this range. But this range right here is the most important range that we will be using most frequently. So you really need to learn how to convert between kilo to milli on your own, without this chart. All right? Anything outside of that, use the chart. It's, I'm not going to make you memorize, you know, a picometer, okay? Honestly, we'll probably never use that as a value anyway. But just so you 
really focus on practicing really hard with this range and eventually memorizing it. Okay? So, how you convert. So a few different ways to think about this. If you're looking literally at the chart, if you're going from, say, here to here, all right, you are moving your decimal to the left. All right, those of you that are used to that whole um, staircase idea, the metric staircase, let's see, I'm gonna erase some of my stuff on here. I want to erase what I have on here right now. I'm going to rotate this for you. Because if in my class for biology, and I think in most of them, we use a slightly different looking picture. Um, but this chart look, is actually set up the same way. It's just turned 90 degrees. Okay. So if you're used to the staircase version of this, all you have to do is take your chart. Let's do this. Rotate it this way. And then you'll notice that this now matches that staircase that you've seen before. Where you have the base unit here and then it goes like this. And up. Alright, whereas moving this way, decimal goes to the right. Moving this way, decimal goes to the left. You notice these boxes down here match the same decimal directions, okay? So it's the same thing that you've seen before, just turned on its side. Another thing that I'm hoping will help, and you want to pay attention to this because literally some of this is going to be taken word for word on your little online assignment today, is you got to think of things in terms of how big the unit is. So first off, which is a bigger unit, like what takes up more space? A millimeter or a meter. I pray you are saying that the meter takes up more space. All right. So if you think about it, if you're going from, say, we go from a meter to millimeters, okay? So millimeters are much tinier, and we're going this way. If we have one meter, are we going to have a lot more millimeters or a lot fewer millimeters? All right, so millimeters are teeny tiny tiny. You have to have a lot more of them to take up the same space as a, as a meter. All right, so that's why it's one meter equals 1,000 millimeters. Okay, so think about as you move here, these are very tiny. You need lots and lots and lots of them. So you're going to end up with big numbers if you're converting from the other end. All right, whereas down here, these are huge, really, really big. A gigameter is a billion meters, all right, or a million kilometers. If you think about, like, our cars are in miles per hour, but, you know, a hundred miles is like 200 kilometers, all right? So a million kilometers is a really, really long trip. You'd need to fill up on gas probably, you know, hundreds of times. So just keep in mind that if you are going from another way of thinking about this, when you're converting from top to bottom, you're going from a really, really big unit to a very, very tiny unit, all right? So big to tiny, you move the decimal to the right, and you should get more zeros, all right? So like zeros before the decimal place. Whereas the other way, if you go from tiny, so you go from the bottom of the chart to the bigger side of the chart, so, you know, you have a millimeter and you're going to meters. You bear it, like, if you have one millimeter, you have nowhere near a whole millimeter. So this has to be more decimals. Okay, so like 0 0.00001 or something like that. Okay. 
This is really, really simple, but in the past, it has been incredibly complicated for some students. So just utilize the decimal moving rules. Utilize, you know, try to use this if you're going from big to small, your number should be getting bigger, like a big unit to a small unit. Okay, whereas if you're going from a really small unit to a really big unit, your number should be getting smaller. Okay, so try to use those rules in order to play around with some of these conversions. All right, at this point, if you know this stuff, if you know how to move around decimals, stop watching the video. But for those of you who this whole thing has just been like, huh, what the heck are you talking about? Because you don't remember this stuff from biology or your other classes. I'm going to do a few conversions for you using the rules that are written on the sheet. Okay. And then we will, then hopefully that should make everything click. So let's rotate our sheet back, the yellow bear. So example would be, let's go from 50 millimeters, and we want to know what that is in meters. Okay, so find on the chart where you're starting, milli is right here, and then mark on the chart where you're ending, and we're going to end right here. So what we need to do is we need to know how many decimal points we're going to move. So, you don't count the box you're in. We're already here. So we count one, two, three boxes, and we are moving in this direction on the chart. All right, so if we're moving from the bottom to the top, we're going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, our number should be getting smaller. So that means we need to move our decimal point to the left. All right, so 50, the decimal point's gonna be after that zero. Moving three boxes, so we need to move it three spaces. One, two, three. If you end up with an empty space, you always fill those in with zeros. So 50 millimeters is equal to zero, or point, zero, five, zero meters. Sometimes you'll see this written here. And this zero on the front is just written in order to draw your eye to the fact that there's a decimal so the decimal doesn't get overlooked. Okay? So let's try one in the other direction. So, raise here. Sorry, your racing's not very fast on here. And use a different color. Let's go from let's see. 0 0.5 megameters, all right, so 0 0.5 megameters, and we want to know what that is in centimeters, all right, so we're starting here, and then we are ending here, all right, so we're going down on the chart, and we're going how many boxes? Remember, you don't count the box that you start in, you count all the other ones. So we've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight decimal moves. Okay? And again, we're going from a huge unit. So something that takes up a ton of space to something that takes up a teeny tiny amount of space. So if we want to know how many centimeters are going to fit in this one big huge, or this half a megameter, there's going to be tons of them because centimeters are really tiny. So again, and if you also look at the rules on the side when converting from top to bottom, you move the decimal to the right, which means your number is going to get bigger. All right, so if we start with 0 0.5, then we need to move our decimal eight times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here's where the decimal started. All of these become zeros. All right, so we end up with one, two, three. That's those. One, two, three. 
that goes. 50 million centimeters. All right. So remember, these things, small stuff, you need lots of them to make the bigger things. Okay? You keep that in mind. You know, if you think about converting from centimeters to meters, you're always going to have more centimeters than you do meters because centimeters take up less space. So hopefully this helps. Again, we're going to do a bunch of practice with this. Ask questions in class. Come to office hours if it's not making sense. But really, the metric system is based on 10. It's just moving decimals around. The trick is getting it straight in your head, which way the decimals got to go. All right.